All right, class, this is lesson 5-7, scatter plots and trend lines. Objectives, so uh, you will learn to write an equation of a trend line and a line of best fit, and you will learn how to use a trend line and a line of best fit to make predictions. So, here's our vocab. One thing you have to know is what a trend line is, uh, what a scatter plot is. A scatter plot is a graph that relates to the set of data. If we plot each of these pairs of data on the graph, it'll be a scatter plot. So, three, negative one, negative two, zero, two, and negative zero. Um, if it's a scatter plot, you do not connect the dots. Some words you have to know are uh, correlation. If there's a correlation, you will see a pattern in the dot. Um, the correlation is a measure of the strength of a relationship between two quantities. There's actually a number we're going to learn how to find using our calculator. A positive correlation means that as x increases, y increases, or as the independent variable increases, the dependent variable also increases. Uh, negative correlation is when the dependent variable decreases as the independent variable increases, and nor, no correlation would be there's no pattern at all. So a positive correlation would look like this. A negative correlation would look like this. And no correlation would look like this. Right. So uh, here's a table that shows the amount of time spent studying for final exam by eight students in the grades they earn. We're going to make a scatter plot of the data and see if we don't notice a relationship there. I'm going to pause here and you, you can do the same. First, let's, let's uh, try and come up with a scale that we think will work. We're going to put the hours spent studying on the x-axis and the grade earned on the y-axis. And so for the hours, we can just go up by one. That should work. And for the grade earned, we need to get, it looks like it's probably a 100-point scale. So if we go by 10, that should work here. All right, I'll plot the points. You can plot the points. Go ahead and pause. All right, here's what the graph looks like when you plot all the points. And if you look closely, you may see, and I'll draw a line to help you notice this, but as the hours increase, the grade tends to go up. So this is a positive relationship or a positive correlation. All right. So go ahead and try it. Uh, pause now. You can plot the graph. You can answer the question. All right. Here's what your graph should look like. And since the Dollar spent increases as the or the dollars the gallons sorry I labeled that wrong the gallons bought increases as the dollar spent increases we have a positive correlation. All right, let's consider the population of city and the number of letters in the name of the city. We do expect a positive correlation, a negative correlation, or no, no correlation. Explain the reason. As an example, think of the city or town you live in. How many letters are in the name of your city? So Buffalo there. Approximately how many people live there? So in Buffalo, there are seven letters and there's about 50,000 people there. Okay. Uh, I'll think of another city, a very different size than the one you choose for it to map. Exercise 11, how many letters are in the name of the city? How about St. Paul? 
And I think there's about 200,000 people in there, maybe. Okay, is the size of either city dependent on the number of letters? No. What kind of correlation would you expect between the two sets of data? I would expect no correlation. But the size, the population has nothing to do with the length of the name. All right. Writing an equation for a trend line. A trend line is a line on a scatter plot drawn near the points that shows the correlation. There should be about the same number of points above the line as below it. So um, we're going to call this, some places you'll hear this called the line of best fit. So, and the method we're going to use here is we're just going to eyeball a line. So we need to make this graph. We can think of a good, appropriate, Scale. I think a scale of one on the x-axis, which will be our years, will work. So, that's good. And then our population, it looks like we're in the thousands. I'm going to uh, skip a little here. So I'm going to do one of these. And I'm going to start at uh, 1,000 right here. And then I need to get all the way to 1,700. So if I go by 100, that should be good. So this is going to be, each line will be 100 more. So 1,200, 1,400, 1,600. That should work. And now I'm going to plot the points. You can go ahead and plot the points. I'm going to pause to do that. All right, so your graph looks like that. We can see there's a positive correlation here. Now we are going to try to estimate the relationship by drawing a line. Now, one of the things that it said is that you should have about the same number of dots above and below the line. So you could use like a clear ruler would be nice here, but I'm just going to extend the line through there, through those points. And what I'm trying to do is estimate the slope of those dots with this line. Then I'm going to move the line a little bit inside those dots so that we have about the same number of dots above and below the line. I think about right there it looks pretty good. We have about three above the line, three below the line. That looks pretty good. Okay, and now we're going to write an equation for that. Now, one, one way you can write an equation is if you have um, the slope and a point, you can use the point-slope form. Or if you have a slope and a y-intercept, you could do that. Um, we could estimate the y-intercept by looking at where it crosses right here and just estimating that amount and coming up with a slope. If you have two points on the line, you can use those to write the equation. And if you look closely here, I'm going to... I'm going to say that those two are pretty close to that line. So, so we could probably use those two points. And those two points are from our data 7, year 7, and year 4. So using our slope intercept form, or our, our uh, slope equation, we can take 1740 minus 1490. And we can do 7 minus 4. And 1740 minus 1490 is 50. Divide that by 3. 50 divided by 3 is 83 and a third, I believe. Check my math. It's not quite right. Fix it. Um, so that's my slope. About, we can round that to 83. So 83 is our slope. Now, if I use my point slope form, I can just take, choose one of those two points and put it into the equation, and that's this y minus y sub 1 equals to x minus x sub 1. So y minus, I'm going to use the second point that I circled up there. So y minus 1740 is equal to 83. That's my slope. 
I am x minus seven. Okay, so there's an equation. Now, um, if I wanted to make a prediction, like uh, it says predict the 12th year of the study, I can use my equation to help do that. X is the year, so I can just do 7 minus 17, 40 is equal to 83 times 12 minus 7, and that's uh, x y minus 1740 is equal to 83 times 5. Doing my calculator, I need to do 83 times 5 and then 1740. So 83 times 5 plus 1740. And that's 2,105. So I'm going to estimate that in the 12th year, so out here, our population will be 2,155 according to my equation. Now, when you go outside your data, notice that the year 12 is beyond this data. That's called an extrapolation. That extrapolation is when you're beyond your data. If you're inside your data, that's called an interpolation. All right. So go ahead and try this. I'll make the graph. You make the graph, and you can check your answer. Go ahead and pause. All right. So there's my dots. Now I'm going to draw a line through those dots. Remember, you want to try and have about half of them above it and about half of them below it. Then you want to write the equation of the line. And uh, the way you wrote your equation might be a little different, but I'm going to use this point and this point, which is my first year and my sixth year. So find my slope. I can do 22.2 minus 8. Divide that by 6 minus 1, and that's 14.2 divided by 5. My calculator to get that answer. Point 0.84. So that's my slope. Now, I will use one of those points and First one should work just fine. I'm going to do x minus 1 is equal to y minus 8. And there's my equation. Now we want to find the body length of a 7th month old panda. So 7 months will be right here. Substitute that for x. So I'm going to do 2.84 times 6. And then I'm going to add 8 to that, 0.84. And that's 25.04. So my equation estimates the body length to be 25.04. And when we do this kind of estimation, that's an interpolation because seven months is inside this data. All right, I'm going to stop the video now, and uh, that'll be the end of the lesson. We'll do the second part of the lesson in class.